Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today on Customer States, what we have a 2018 Toyota Highlander. Customer just went to an outside shop because uh, they are well out of <clears throat> warranty mileage and it has roughly. Oh, let me get my snips out of there. The car has almost 90k on it. And uh, the outside shop, uh, they scanned it. There's a crank sensor code. And they proceeded to say, well, we don't want to replace it. You got to go to Toyota for that. I kind of know why they said that. Let's take it up top and I'll show you why. Well, now that we have taken it up top, our crank sensor is behind here. And then the harness goes along here behind the, these coolant lines and then the connector is up there. Now, we're missing a very important piece right here. You see that? It's got a little bit more light on it. We're missing uh, an entire exhaust manifold and cat assembly and Y pipe. Why? Because it's on the ground right there. Double Y? Well, we had to take all this Gugats out of here just to gain access to the sensor. And that sensor just so happens to be like that freaking long. So yeah, all this stuff had to get out of here and with it being a 2018 I was able to remove the manifold or actually it's a cat assembly the manifold is integrated into the head as you can see there's just one opening instead of four ports it's all integrated now a lot of the newer cars are going to that to save weight and cost so we're gonna take this guy off here so we can gain access to the sensor and get it out it very good all right guys, now that we have that shield off and the hardware and we have the actual sensor disconnected here, we could physically see our sensor right there. 10 millimeter bolt holding it in. Now, now we're gonna see why we had to remove that cat. Look how long this sensor actually is. So the cat sits like right here. And I most definitely wouldn't have been able to remove that sensor. So now let's work on getting that harness out. Very good. So here we are inside the engine bay. We did take out the ducting to the air box. This guy right here is our AF sensor. This guy right here is our crank sensor. There was a plastic clip holding it in right here, and there was an actual 10 millimeter mounting bolt holding it in right there. So now we just have to really maneuver these coolant lines so we can maneuver the harness back down that way and get it out. But after we get it out, we got to get the new one in. So I'm not sure where the struggle is going to lie, mostly because I'm already struggling getting this harness out. So let's continue. All right, we ran our new harness up in the mounted position. We didn't install the 10 millimeter yet. Uh, the bolt that holds it in place on the back side because we may have to maneuver it a little bit, not sure. Now here's our brand new sensor. O-ring is a little bit of lubrication on there to help it ease the insulation. Oh yeah. Now we're going to tighten up that 10, make our connection, and put everything back together. Alright guys, tip and trick of the video. You can't install the harness while the sensor is fully installed. Ask me how I know. Also, see this little bracket here? You got to put that bracket on before you put the big bracket on. Ask me how I know that. Now, what I did to get this on, I just backed it up a little bit, took the sensor out just to see here, and I was able to make our connection with no problem. And since I already had that off, I installed this guy because it's still stuck to the old harness. Now we're ready to install the bracket again. All right, guys, we are all installed here. We're gonna take this gasket off right here because we're gonna replace it. We're going to replace all the other exhaust gaskets as well. We're going to make our crank sensor harness connection up there. We're going to install the other 10 millimeter bolt. 
new gasket there so yeah we're we're definitely on the back half of the job very good here we are back in the engine bay upper radiator hose is back in its mounted position harness is back in the mounted position and we're connected right there we installed our hot bolt paste on the threads because uh, Audi habits die hard and we are 100% ready to get that cat back in. Meow. All right, let's get the cat back in. Meow. There you go. Be careful of the radiator pet cock. You don't want to break it off. All right. Nope, we gotta move the camera. It's in the way. All right, now, now that we maneuvered the camera out of the way you can kind of see the pet cock in the corner right here you don't want to hit that you're gonna have a bad day a real bad day and then you're gonna take a freaking coolant shower better than a golden shower but i digress all right we're almost there come on get in what am i stuck on what am i stuck on come on you're right there what the hell? Okay, there we go. I had to go up a little further than I should have. And then back down. All aboard the struggle bus. And we are. Come on. Come on, you're right. Yo, you're right there. Get in. Underneath that, and then on there. There we go. That's what was holding me up. That guy right there. My bracket that's on the cat, as you can see, it's moving, was on top of this, which it was it was giving me the business getting those studs in. But now we have our nut ready to go. I'm gonna install that nut right there, and you know what? I'm gonna go to lunch. All right, guys, we're back in the engine bay. Now, tip and trick of the video, I need everybody to listen here. Before you connect the O2 sensor, you have to put the heat shield back on. Ask me how I know. So now that we have the heat shield installed, our connection has been made here. We know our crank sensor is plugged in down here. Now we're gonna take it back up top and install the rest of the exhaust system. Now that we took it back up top, O2 sensor is connected, exhaust is installed, we got new hardware, new gaskets installed. We reused these, they were still good. We got new hardware up there, new gasket here, new gasket here, and uh, as you can see in between there we got a brand new donut gasket there. So meow. I'm going to put the skid shields back on, and uh, that's the upper radiator shield. Then we're going to clear the codes and let it run for a little bit because I did spray the exhaust with some PB Blaster, and there is the hot bolt paste that's going to have to burn off. That hot bolt paste honestly really does help the installation. Very good. Alright guys, let's get the rest of this put back together. Okay guys, our DTC that is confirmed in the vehicle was a P03352A crankshaft position sig sensor, A signal stuck in range. So what we're going to do is, we have our X-Tool diagnostics hooked up, we're going to clear our codes. I'll try and provide a link to this, this is last year's model, I'll provide a, a link to this year's model. And so far, man, it's it's done everything I needed it to do. So that's good there. We'll back out. Are you sure you want to exit? Yep, 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 blah, blah, blah. Key off. All right. Contact. All right, started right up. We have RPM. We had RPM before, and sometimes when the crankshaft position sensor signal is erratic, you may even have an erratic uh, RPM gauge or tech. So yeah, we're good. I'm 
So we're going to go on a road test, but before we go on a road test, we're going to let this vehicle run for a little bit and let all that hot bolt paste, uh, let it burn off a little bit, because I could clearly see we got a little bit of smoke happening. So let's go to the front end and check that smoke action out. All right, we started up right away. Of course, we knew it was going to smoke because, uh, yeah, we got that hot bolt paste and all that PD blaster. Well, it's got to smoke off the engine. So before we bring this back to the customer, it's all going to be smokeless and we're going to road test it, make sure the repair is confirmed and uh, yeah, we'll give the car back in better shape than it originated from. If you guys don't know what to do yet, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for further content.